Hello there. As a composer, I am often asked to write music for choir and orchestra. And something I find really useful when scoring my music is to be able to hear the words that the choir sing as I write them in the score. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how I use a great plugin called MVoice One and how it can be combined with a notation program. In my case, I'm using Dorico Pro 3.5 from Steinberg. Thanks for watching. A while ago, I was asked to compose a piece called Ten Tribes for children's choir and orchestra. And when I produced the original score, I always wanted to be able to hear the words sung back as I had written them in the notation. At the time, there was no software available to do this convincingly. But since then, I have discovered a really useful plugin called MVoice One, which enables composers to type words into their scores and have them sung back in a very musical way. Originally, this plugin was designed to be used in a door like Cubase, but I think it has massive potential for use in a score writing program such as Dorico. I'm using the final chorus from my piece to show how this plugin can work and enhance the compositional process. First of all, I will set up a four part score for soprano, alto, tenor and bass parts in the usual way adding a title, time signature and 8 bars or so of music. Next I will add 4 VST instances of Mvoice 1. Once you've added one instance it's quite easy to duplicate them and then change the name of each instance so that it's easier to identify them later on. Here I am naming the parts Soprano, Alto, Tenor and Bass so that I can assign each of my vocal parts in the score to the correct VST instance. Now that this is all set up, I can open the Mvoice VST for Soprano that I created earlier. There are a few options available for you to change the appearance of the editor. You can change the size of the window to large, although at present you can't custom resize the window by dragging it so that it fills your monitor screen. You can also change the colour theme having either a dark or light background depending on your taste. There are currently two available voices in the plugin. The first is a female voice called Lucy and the other a male voice called Jay which have different ranges to suit the types of voice. Both of these are purchased as separate options. There is a free demo version which limits you to just seven notes, but it is a great way to get you started using this plugin. Also in the editor is the record button, which you need to enable to send information from Dorico or any other door that you might be using. There is also an option here to link the plugin to varying tempo changes in your project, but I think that this feature only links to music produced in doors just at the moment. There is a pencil tool, copy, paste and undo buttons and also you can link the playback head to scroll with your notation software which is a really useful feature because it enables Dorico and Mvoice One to stay in sync at all times. One thing I do recommend is to use two monitors if possible so that the editor is always in view when you want to play the score back. Otherwise you have to keep bringing it into view. Or you could resize the editor and Dorico to share the monitor screen, but this does get a little bit fiddly. There are two ways of adding notes in the plugin. The first is by drawing them in, which I'll show you here, and the other is by letting Dorico send the written notation from your score, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Once you've drawn the notes in with the pencil tool, you can audition them by selecting the notes and pressing play in the editor. It will play back your notes singing to a default LA word. By dragging the notes up and down, you can change the individual pitch very easily.
Now this is where mVoice really starts to become useful. By typing in the words you can now get the plugin voice to sing them back to you. You can lengthen individual notes by dragging the ends of them, or you can shorten them in the same way. One. One. And finally, you can shift whole phrases of music, which is really useful when using it with notation software, One, when you want the voice two, to be sung back three, with a little bit more rubato, four than is possibly written in the score. So now we are going to look at how this plugin works by accepting note information from Dorico. Although note volume changes that Dorico sends, for example, pianissimo or forte or crescendo aren't recorded, it will accurately record note lengths and correct pitch. I'm going to record a melody in real time and then start to edit the part once the notes have been added to the score. OK, that's done. Now, to this melody, I'm going to add a key signature, a metronome mark, some dynamics, and fill in the lyrics that I need. Let's have a quick listen to the melody with the lyrics once more, just to make sure that all the note values are as I want them. So all we need to do is press record on the mVoice plugin, start the music in Dorico and watch as the plugin records the melody line. We now need to add the original lyrics, remembering that the amount of syllables in the words we use should match the amount of notes we have recorded in the editor, otherwise the mVoice plugin won't be able to work. It's also worth noting that this plugin works its magic in real time in the cloud, so an internet connection is necessary. Let's play back what we've recorded. We can now preview and edit the part, and also, if you want to add a little bit more vibrato to any of the notes, you simply draw in some lines with the pen tool and add them to the note and treat them as a change in pitch to the note. You can alter the size of these lines depending on how much vibrato you wish to add. Another nice feature is to be able to give the music a little bit more slide into each note. 
You do this again by using the pen tool and simply chop up the melody and move the part down so that it sounds like a portamento, just as a real vocalist might do in a performance. You do have to play around with this just to get some acceptable results, but it does add a lot of character to the vocal part. If you remember, at the beginning of this video, I created four different instances of the plugin, one for each of the vocal parts in my score. I've now recorded all of the four different parts into the separate instances, and you can hear them combined as a vocal quartet now. All I need now is to add the original orchestration to the vocal part, which I've scored in Dorico using a selection of different VST instruments. I hope that you found some of what I've discussed in this video useful. Personally, I really like the Envoice One vocal plugin, and combined with Dorico, or any other notation software that accepts VSTs, it can give composers the opportunity to create good mock-ups of their own compositions. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button, and I'll post some more stuff when I've done it. To finish, I'll leave you with a look at all the elements of the piece combined together. Thanks for watching.